Good morning and welcome to the Salvation Army at Wickford. We're so pleased that you could spend some time with us on this Sunday, the 3rd of July in the year 2022. Today I want to share some thoughts from Psalm 84 and I'm going to read that psalm now from the New International Version of the Bible. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord Almighty! My soul yearns, even faints, for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Even the sparrow has found a home and the swallow a nest for herself where she may have her young. A place near your altar, Lord Almighty, my King and my God. Blessed are those who dwell in your house. They are ever praising you. Blessed are those whose strength is in you, whose hearts are set on pilgrimage. As they pass through the valley of Baca, they make a place of springs. The autumn rains also cover it with pools. They go from strength to strength till each appears before God in Zion. Hear my prayer, Lord God Almighty. Listen to me, God of Jacob. Look on our shield, O God. Look with favour on your anointed one. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord bestows favour and honour. No good thing does he withhold from those whose walk is blameless. Lord Almighty, blessed are those who trust in you. We're going to start with a song um, from the Salvation Army songbook, Be Glad in the Lord and Rejoice. I'd like to read the second verse, and that has a direct relationship with some of the things I'm going to say later. What though in the conflict for fights your enemies almost prevail, God's armies, just hid from your sight, are more than the foes which assail. Have a good sing.
The idea that life is a journey is one that has attracted the attention of many storytellers, novelists and playwrights over the years. The word pilgrim and pilgrimage perhaps came in a new way into the English language with the 1611 King James translation of the Bible. One of the founding fathers of the Jewish faith, Jacob, describes his life as a pilgrimage. Or the Apostle Peter writes to the church members, describing them as pilgrims. A few years later, John Bunyan gave us his novel, Pilgrim's Progress. A pilgrimage is a journey made as an act of religious devotion. A pilgrim is the person who undertakes such a journey. Psalm 84 is about our spiritual journey, a spiritual journey to make God the most important part of our lives. Now, one aspect of pilgrimage is that we are never alone. We are part of a wider family of pilgrims who can meet, encourage and support each other. Psalm 84 then is all about pilgrimage. It starts and ends by referring to the Lord Almighty. See the first verse and the last verse. Now, in older translations, the name of God was translated not as Lord Almighty, but as Lord of Hosts. And this title, Lord of Hosts, is used 235 times in the King James Version of the Bible and literally means Lord of Armies. You see, the hosts are nothing less than the people of God, those who have gone before us, combined with the people of God now, combined with all the angels of heaven. As we undertake this journey, be assured that egging us on from the sidelines are our families who have gone on before. This is a picture given to us in the New Testament by the writer of Hebrews, chapter 12. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. As we undertake our pilgrimage to be closer to God, his presence is even with us now. His protection is all around us now. So here is the paradox. The Lord Almighty, the Lord of hosts, is travelling with you now, even as you journey towards him as your final destination. You and I are on a pilgrimage through life. We are on a journey. The idea is that day by day the kingdom of heaven draws nearer in our lives, that day by day we choose to live closer to God, that day by day we become more like Jesus, Jesus the way to the Father. But we have to take that definite decision, don't we, to undertake this pilgrimage, to undertake this journey. We need to take the viewpoint that God is our destination and we want to be near him. So, Lord Almighty, Lord of hosts appears twice in this psalm. The word blessing um, or blessed occurs um, three times. For example, blessed are those who dwell in your house. They are ever praising you. Here the psalm is looking forwards to when the pilgrimage is accomplished and we are in the eternal presence of God. He says you will be blessed. But right at the end of the psalm, he comes to another conclusion. He says, Lord of hosts. Blessed is the one who trusts in you. As he starts his journey, he is aware that the pilgrims do have the presence of God with them. He is aware that this will not be totally fulfilled until he completes his journey. But as he travels, God wants to bless now all those who trust him now. God wants to bless you. What does that mean? To be blessed is to be given a portion of God's special favour. We are his children. Jesus gave his life so that we might be part of his kingdom. To be blessed is to have the joy of God flowing in our lives. An inner joy that knows that we belong to him, that we will never be deserted. God's special 
favour is grace. We do not deserve it. We do not deserve his forgiveness. We do not deserve his love. Yet through Jesus, it flows into our lives. He pours out his forgiveness, his love, his joy into our lives. His Holy Spirit speaks words of reassurance to us, telling us that we belong to him. And for this spiritual journey, we are told that we need just one thing, trust. If we have trust, we will be blessed with the presence of Jesus in our lives. Lord of hosts, says the psalmist, blessed is the one who trusts in you. Trust is important because we need to be aware that there is a difficult valley along the way which we will have to negotiate. This idea of a valley in our journey is not a new one. In Psalm 23, we have a picture of Jesus as the good shepherd leading us through the valley of the shadow of death. We have to walk through this particular valley, the valley of death. But likewise, in the 84th Psalm, we are introduced to a different valley. The psalmist says we have to travel through the valley of Baca. The valley of Baca is literally the valley of weeping. Baca is a weeping tree. It's one that, that drips gum like tears, such as the balsam tree. Our pilgrimage takes us through places of weeping. We are Christians. We are human. We are not immune from times of sorrow, from times of sadness, even from times of depression. The name of the valley, the valley of Baca, the valley of weeping, indicates a dry, arid region, since this is where these types of trees grow, these balsam trees grow in an arid environment. And as people travelled their pilgrimage to Jerusalem to worship, they would pass through this weary, weeping place. Close to Jerusalem, as the, pilgrimage, as the pilgrims approached the temple on Mount Zion, there lies the valley of Rephaim with its balsam trees. It is this valley, the Valley of Rephaim, that has been identified as the Valley of Baca, spoken about in the Psalms. And King David had a lot of problem with the Philistine army in the Valley of Rephaim. On more than one occasion, the Philistines used the valley for military manoeuvres to try and attack him and kill him. We can pick up what happened in the second book of Samuel, chapter 5, starting at verse 22. Sometime later, the Philistines came back into the hill country and camped in Rephaim Valley. David asked the Lord what he should do, and the Lord answered, Don't attack them from the front. Circle around behind and attack from among the balsam trees. Wait until you hear a sound in the treetops like marching troops. Then attack quickly. That sound will mean I have marched out ahead of you to fight the Philistine army. David obeyed the Lord and defeated the Philistines. He even chased them all the way from Geba to the entrance to Gezer. We all have to walk through a valley of sadness and weeping. We are realistic. We know that life brings its tears. It isn't all joy. But for the Christian on his pilgrimage, we need to note two things. Firstly, how we do things, how we approach things, how we tackle things, is different from people who do not have faith. We approach life through trust and prayer. We need to view each and every issue from the perspective of God, not from our own human perspective. In the Bible passage then, David is told not to attack the enemy head on, but to follow God's guidance and come at it another way. And this is so true of many things that would distract us in the Christian pilgrimage, those things that bring tears. We need to consider them through the eyes of God. Not least of these things is how we think about death and dying. Paul wrote in his first letter to the Thessalonians, chapter 4, verses 13 and 14. Now concerning those who have fallen asleep, we don't want you to remain in ignorance about them, my dear family. We don't want you to have the kind of grief that other people do, people who don't have any hope. For you see, if we believe that Jesus died and rose, that's the way God will also, through Jesus, bring with him those who have fallen asleep. We need to look at our circumstances as members of God's family. 
We need to look at what is happening to us through the eyes of God. One of my favourite songs in the, the film and the stage show, Prince of Egypt, invites us to look at ourselves through heaven's eyes. And when we do so, we will see things differently. On our pilgrimage, God is not only the God of trust, he is the God of hope. Look at things through God's eyes. The second thing we need to do is to realise that God is the Lord of hosts. He is the Lord of armies. God stands by us. As David goes down into the valley of weeping, God tells him to pause and listen among the weeping trees. The sound he hears isn't the sound of the trees swaying in the breeze. Rather, it is the sound of the Lord of hosts and his army gone to lead the way through the valley ahead of him. In any difficult encounter we have, the truth that God has gone on ahead of us is a great comfort. He is already fighting the battle for us. He is already preparing the way ahead, just as an expeditionary force of army scouts go ahead to prepare the way for the main forces. So the psalmist says that Jesus, who he calls the Anointed One, is to be our shield, our protector. Jesus protects us because in each and every situation he is already there ahead of us. In fact, like the Good Shepherd, he is striding ahead, leading us through that valley, that valley of weeping on this occasion, leading us through the hard times into the presence of God, into heaven where God's will is done perfectly by his people. Because of the victory that is won by God, this arid valley full of weeping trees is suddenly transformed by the people into a place of refreshment. It becomes a place of springs. The autumn, way, the autumn rains at long last are on their way and they herald the winter rains, even more refreshment, which will renew the ground and bring forth green shoots anew in a place that was apparently a desert. The valley of Baca, the valley of weeping, is transformed because we trust God, because he is with us. In fact, he is ahead of us. At this point in the pilgrimage, the psalmist reveals his hand, reveals the choice he has made. He, he could have lived and gone about and loitered with those he called the wicked, those who do not know God, those people who rejected a relationship with God, those people who only wanted to answer to themselves or whose goals were ambition and wealth and fame. But that wasn't his goal. His goal, the psalmist's goal, was to live his life in the presence of God. To be a doorkeeper then and now is a very humble profession. It is not a well-paid profession. Verse 10 of this psalm is very famous and says, Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. The psalmist yearns for the presence of God who alone can give security and blessings. And this is a great ambition. Theologian Tom Wright tells how his father came back from a prisoner of war camp at the end of the Second World War. The local territorial army unit tried to persuade him to be their leader, to bring up the next generation and impart his knowledge and whiz to them, something that his own father had done before him. It would entail about a day of his week and perhaps a summer camping expedition. But at the same time, his father had also been asked to be a church warden at the local church. The tasks were fairly mundane and simple, ringing the bell for the services, handing out hymn books, taking up the offering. There was nothing wrong with the territorial army, but instead he chose to be a doorkeeper in the house of God. His ambition was to seek the will of God for his life, to put God at the centre. And for those who aim to journey towards the Lord of hosts, those for whom heaven is their goal, those who seek to live holy lives, a promise is given. This is the promise from verse 11 of the psalm. No good thing does God withhold from those whose walk is blameless. Lord Almighty, blessed is the one who trusts in you.
no good thing does he withhold. If you would know the joy and the blessing that God has for your life, then make your pilgrimage, your ambition, a simple one. To be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord is the greatest ambition anyone can have in their lives. Have ambition to live your life near to God. If you trust him and walk in his ways, then he will withhold no good thing from you. Going to listen to a version of Psalm 84 just now. God bless you. Oh, 